Hello and welcome to another Cocos 2DS community tutorial series and in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to create a scrolling background sort of similar to how you see in endless runner games or so for example like Flappy Bird or Jetpack Joyride. I'm going to use some base code it's literally just a theme that just runs and days it to no menu and no sprite there'll be a link to the source code for the base code and as, and as usual there'll be a link to the source code produced from this project we're also going to be using a simple star background which we created You're more than welcome to using your projects or testing or whatever they'll be included in both links so I'm just going to go ahead and open up the project Okay, a couple of things to note. This is the star background that we're using. You can use whatever you want, but this is the one that we're going to be using. And the actual application will run in Portrait Mode. If you don't know how to get to run in Portrait Mode, you click on your project at the top here, and then you just select your device orientation. It's as simple as that. So let's just go to the myapp.js. But before we do anything, we'll just run the application and just show you what it actually does as of now. Okay, as you, as you can see, it's loaded the scene, but it's doing nothing, which is fine because we've got literally no code to like add a sprite or menu or anything. So let's just get rid of that. Come back to here. We're going to add three new variables. The first one will be background underscore sprite underscore one, colon, no, comma. Then we'll do background sprite two, colon, no. Comma, then we'll do the window size or win underscore size colon no comma and finally for this section let's just sort out the formatting now the next step is to initialize the background sprites might be wondering why we've got two we've got two because one will initially appear on the screen and one will be above the screen and they will slowly scroll down and when one has gone completely off the screen so below it it will reset its position to above the screen so it'll look like it's endlessly scrolling but there's actually only two sprites but you'll give the illusion of an endless scrolling background so the first thing we want to do is initialize the window size of so this dot window size equals cc dot director dot get instance dot get win size and now that we've got that let's just sort out the formatting we're going to initialize the background so this dot background sprite underscore one equals cc dot sprite dot create open close bracket semicolon and put quotation marks res for slash star background dot png and what we're going to do we're also going to set the anchor position so this dot background sprite dot set anchor point open close bracket in there we're going to do cc dot p we're going to put zero zero what the anchor point is where the actual origin of the sprite is initially 0 0.5 0 0.5 so it's in the center so if you were to position the sprite at zero zero which it is by default placed at before you set the position even though it'd be a zero zero it won't start fully on the screen it won't start the bottom left in the bottom left it will start the center of the sprite in the bottom left of the screen hence why we do this you can keep it at 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 or whatever you want but you just got to take that into account when you're doing calculations and creating algorithms we just prefer to work with a zero zero anchor point okay so we're going to do something very similar for background sprite 2 and let's literally change these numbers to two, two. But for the second background spray, we're going to do one extra thing when the set is position because we want it to be initially above the screen. So this dot background underscore spray underscore two dot set position open close bracket and in there we'll do cc dot p open close bracket we'll put zero because it'll be starting at the left side initially and we're not going to affect the x-axis we'll do comma this dot win size dot height and that is it now that has the position the next step is to add these sprites as a child so this dot 
add child, open close bracket, and there we're going to put this dot background sprite underscore one, comma zero. And we'll do something very similar for the second background sprite. Add the second background sprite. Finally, let's sort out the formatting. Let's just show you what happens when we run this. Okay, the first background sprite has appeared. The second one is actually a buzz screen, so you can't see it. So we're going to apply some animations to, uh, to actually make it scroll and move so you can actually see the top background. So below here, what you want to do is create a new sprite action. So var sprite underscore action. If you want to understand a bit more about how to add a sprite and uh, the different uh, sprite actions or menus, etc., we've got a separate tutorial series for that. There'll be a link in the description to that tutorial series, so you can go check that out. So var sprite action equals, we're going to do not single equal, not double equals, cc dot repeat forever. And the reason we're repeating it forever is because it's going to be constantly moving. We don't want it just to move once and then never to move again. Dot create, open close bracket, spell create properly though. Then inside we're going to specify the actual action that we want to repeat. We'll do cc dot move by dot create, open close bracket, uh, inside we'll put how long we want the action to take, we're going to put 2.0 seconds, so 2 seconds, comma, cc.p, so where we want it to move to, so I'm going to put 0, because the x-axis is not going to be affected, then we're going to put minus this dot wind size dot height, and that is, the reason is wind size minus wind size dot height, so we, we get the height, uh, so, for example, on a regular iPhone non Retina before 480 pixels, you'll move negative, so you'll move down, and then you'll move on, you'll go off the screen, and then we'll add some code so we reset to the top. So, let's just literally run this action. So, this dot background sprite dot run action open close bracket sprite action. And before I at the next action, I'm simply just going to confirm that this is working with the first sprite. As you can see, the first sprite is scrolling, scrolling. It doesn't reset because we haven't had the code yet, and the top sprite isn't scrolling. So we can just simply copy and paste this code. And we need to create another sprite action because if we don't, we just apply the, the same sprite action. Only one of these sprites will get that action, which is a little annoying. If anyone knows how to reuse sprite actions or actions in general, that would be fantastic. And I'm just setting up the two, but all the other parameters can stay the same. We we'll click play now. As you can see, it's both backgrounds are scrolling because the scroll is actually a lot longer. It seems seamless because that's the way the backgrounds are being designed. That's how you would want to design backgrounds for some sort of endless scroller. But what you've noticed, it just what's actually happening is just keeps on scrolling down and down and down. There's nothing on the screen anymore. So what we want to do is create a update function which is called every frame just to check the position of the sprite. Cocos 2DX has a great way to do this. And what you do is this dot schedule update open close bracket semicolon. This basically says call the update function every frame and then we actually declare the update function so we do update colon function open close bracket we put in dt which is delta time basically it's the time between frames so if you were to be on a device that's running at 60 frames per second it's roughly about 0 0.16 um, seconds per frame uh, sem not semicolon you want to do a comma and the reason we call it update, it's it's already built into Cocos 2DX, so we can't just name it, I don't know, Hello World, for example, or How Word, I don't know, can't spell Hello World. You, you, we've got to name it update, because when you call this function, this dot schedule update, it tells the code to run the update function, but which which is great, it's got the built-in functionality, so, don't, so we don't have to worry about an update function. 
and in there we want to do a check though if if and in the if then we're going to do this dot background sprite dot one dot get position colon code I mean open close bracket dot y if that is less than or equal to minus this dot win size dot height so if it's gone off the screen fully uh, we will reset the position to do that we do this dot background sprite dot one or underscore one dot set position and then we do open close bracket and we put zero for the x and then we put this dot win size dot height dot height so it starts above the screen that's oopsie daisy yeah. Sort of the formatting, and we can literally just copy and paste this code and do the same for the second background sprite. So we do yeah, sort of the formatting before we do any changes to the code. And we literally just change anything that has a one to a two, and this now should have an endless scrolling background. Go off, sort of the formatting. So if I click play. We should have an endless scrolling star background. There we have it. We've got an endless scrolling background. You can make it scroll up. You just have to change the negatives to positive, positive to negative. It's pretty easy um, to do that and change the check slightly. You might think this running a little laggy, that is simply because we've got a really low frame rate, as you see it's dipping like 20, 30, 40, it's sort of getting to very briefly, but on a device, I've tried it on my iPhone 5, it runs a smooth 60 frames per second, per second sorry, and it runs fantastic. So there you go, that's how to create an endless scrolling background, hope you enjoyed the tutorial, if you've got any more questions, Feel free to message us, we Facebook, Twitter, YouTube or whatever and we'll try and answer the question to the best of our knowledge. If we think that you'll help the community a lot, we'll create a tutorial very similar to this and thanks for watching.